Hello and uh, welcome to episode 39 of Enterprise Tech India Unplugged. Uh, we are back after a short break because uh, our chief mentor had uh, developed uh, symptoms of covid <laughs> and he has recovered uh, uh, in a home quarantine. Fortunately, he did not require any hospitalization and he has developed his own framework of how to uh, how to combat covid effectively and uh, uh, at home at least uh, when with, with let's say mild to uh, medium symptoms and uh, if you are if you are unfortunate if you are fortunate enough not to be having uh, severe symptoms you can most of the time manage it at home so welcome kumaran and we also have uh, gautam who is uh, who is leading the uh, he's head of technology at landmark in uh, malaysia and uh, we welcome him to get his perspective on uh, the topic which we have today is uh, the architecture frameworks which are available to for enterprise it and uh, there are there are quite a few frameworks and some of them are more popular than others so what i want to do today is get perspective from both kumaran and gautam on uh, on how these frameworks actually are useful not useful restrictive or not restrictive how do they actually how do people use them or not use them or abuse them right so uh, th those are all spectrum of possibilities once you have any any kind of a framework so kumaran starting with you what do, what do you think about frameworks in general how how do they really these architectural frameworks for it let's be specific about that because uh, there may be any kind of framework but what do you think about these architectural frameworks for enterprise IT? Uh, how do they really uh, impact the quality of uh, uh, outcomes, I would say, because that's what we are interested in, right? Nobody is interested in architecture for the sake of architecture. I, yeah, I think they are very much needed. I have no doubts on that. Um, because I think, uh, as we said, right, uh, I think COVID is a great example. I think I'll start quoting it again and again for everything that we do. Just like the biggest challenge with COVID is there's too many unknowns there, right? From the fundamentals of why it is there and things like that, even with all the expertise around. I think for the solutions that we do in the enterprise is pretty much like that, right? Uh, what the actual customer need is, right? And what is the actual pain problem? We have talked about it, a lot of things in our uh, architecture scenarios, right? Like within us, if you look at it, I remember one of the things is about that returns case, which Gautam, you were talking about, right? When you implemented things like that. So that's like a variant, right? It's a variant of COVID that you had. You implemented a thing, but the variant took you down again, okay? Or somewhere we forgot to, uh, like, um, okay, so at the beginning of pandemic, for example, right? We wouldn't know that an oxygen cylinder will cause a problem, right? Or, I don't know, I think in parts of North India, right? I've had this, I've been hearing this stories, again, stories. They are rumors, let me keep it as rumors. But people trying to be prepared in double quotes, okay? So I have a family of 10 family members, okay? 10 into 2, 20 oxygen cylinders, I take it and put it in my house. I'm very well prepared for it. Now imagine thousands of families doing this, right? The, um, even though you might have oxygen production capability, you don't have the thing of doing the rotation. The oxygen cylinders are all locked up, right? So this is something we can't know or we can't think about it, right? They, for example, it will be hard for a medical health. Let's assume the, here, let me equate the healthcare professional to the technology professional. For a doctor, okay, or a hospital administrator, it will be hard for them to think somebody will hoard oxygen cylinders. The direction of that thought process itself will not go. Because they'll be looking at medicines, biology, that kind of a thing is where that will go. Right? So I'm equating it to technology where we look at it like which application, which software, which version, all that. But then there are those related things which can actually bring you down, 
right? So a very well prepared hospital, well qualified things, but you don't have oxygen. What do you do? Right? It's literally the case in which uh, all doctors ready, all hospital ready, but patients dead. Right? It's just unfortunate, right? In software, also same thing happens. Softwares just die. Right? Uh, people don't use it. It dies an untimely death. It dies an unceremonious death. It dies a disgraceful death. Right? There's no dignity in the death of a software. How many softwares have died with dignity? We spit <laughs> on their graves. <laughs> right. The end users spit on their graves. Right? Developers spit on the previous version of it. So it's um, so. Why is this happening? It's because we don't have a framework. We are too biased with one thing. So frameworks is very important for architects, especially the ones who are playing the role of an architect or architecture to have a set of frameworks which they use to understand and look at the solutions that they are doing. Without frameworks, it's humanly impossible to think of just sitting in one corner and uh, introspecting. I don't know how people can do it. Then it'll be like Buddha's nirvana has to come from top somewhere. <laughs> somewhere like that. Correct. <laughs> so I don't think that is really that practical. So frame short answer. Yes. Without frameworks, I don't think we can actually do architecture. We need to rely on architecture frameworks. So how do actually frameworks actually help in practical terms? I mean, now we established okay. that we need frameworks, right? So I would, okay, so full disclosure, uh, I am, my uh, belief, I would mm -hmm. say, or my comfort is with the ISA framework of architecture. Mm -hmm. And compared to uh, Togaf and Zachman, I kind of have a preference for the ISA's framework. It's called ITA book, IT Architecture Book of Knowledge. And the reason I find uh, that is I'm able to apply it at a project level. Even if I have a three member project, even if I have a maintenance project, okay. From day one, I can take this framework and start using it, applying it to figure out solutions. With Togaf and Zatman, I found it hard. Mm -hmm. okay? I'm not too sure if somebody else has been able to do it at a smaller project, at a smaller thing. I don't know. I haven't heard of it. Mm -hmm. But this one I could do. And I didn't know, okay, I don't know how to use a Zachman or a Toga for a three member mm -hmm. or a maintenance project. Mm -hmm. But I know ISA works. I can give evidence of that. Mm -hmm. So how does this help? So I'm, I'm going to talk only with respect to that. Mm -hmm. So if you take that, for example, it says that think of every solution from a five pillar perspective. And they mm -hmm. list out the five pillars. Mm -hmm. okay, I think in one of our conversations we had Sanjay from E and Y talking mm -hmm. about corpse, which he came out as a mm -hmm. cloud thing, which is kind of seems to be a variant of this, which mm -hmm. is fine for cloud architecture, right? Mm -hmm. One is it kind of helps you to think from a business perspective, any solution that you do, how is it aligned to the business, right? There are a set of points, questions that you need to look at and then say, it's kind of a, think of it as a very, in a crude form as a checklist, right? a uh, five point checklist mm -hmm. there are some sub points under them you have to say tick 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 and then you can say like let's say for easier understanding assume that there are five columns okay and has each has got five points and you have to do a tick against each of them now if you're able to tick 25 of them you have a fairly strong architecture mm -hmm. okay, so 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 what you're saying is that it provides guidance on how to build something for the enterprise, right? And, and right. gives you gives you guidance for making those choices, right? Because yeah. they, they, there will be a number of choices for, for any specific uh, activity or any component to be chosen, right? So it gives you guidance on that. So how, how does that actually, uh, how does that guidance actually work? Let's talk specifically maybe about ISA. How I does would, the guidance actually work? Let's take some example of uh, uh, any application which you think can demonstrate this example. And maybe at a later stage, you can talk about 
how you can apply it at a larger scale, not just uh, one application, but at larger scale, how does it apply? So it's kind of interesting, right? The framework actually helps you look at what choices do I have? Now, without that, we actually don't choose. We decide quickly and act. So for example, if you take ERP, right? I've heard this thing. Any problem in the enterprise, put SAP problem solved. I think Gautam will agree to it. Oh, you have a replenishment problem. Uh, JD Edwards, this module problem will be solved. Yeah. Right? Has it ever solved it? <laughs> That's a claim. Preconceived right? notion, yes. Preconceived notion. But it has never solved that, right? No. Uh, implementing it will take its own time. And even after that, it will morph into a version 2 or a version, a variant. It will mutate. The, <laughs> I think at least in COVID, we can be fairly sure it mutates. Okay, mm -hmm. but in the real world, there's no mutation. You just didn't read the original strain properly. <laughs> there's no mutation happening. Mm -hmm. right? We didn't read it itself, right? Mm -hmm. So we are very poor in diagnostics itself. Mm -hmm. Now, consider good architecture skills are a great diagnostic kit also. So let me take something specific. My favorite example, people who have heard my episodes before would have heard this, but for others who haven't, Great SharePoint implementation I did. First in India, I got an award. Customer gave good rating. Microsoft happy. Press release is done. Everybody is happy. End of the day, nobody used the application and the customer junked the project eight months later. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, why did that happen? Basically because we missed the user experience. How easy will it be for somebody to implement it? We just thought, oh, new technology come. It's hard to implement. Can I find a easier, quicker way of implementing it. And I was very proud that we could implement it in one and a half to two months. A completely new technology. Customer was also very happy. Oh, we've never gone live with the product so quickly. What is the point in going live if nobody's going to use it? It's just going to be dead. Right? That's what actually happened. Because we actually, in a simple terms, it was something like we had to have 10 mandatory information needed to be input before documents can be uploaded into there. If there are no documents in a knowledge repository, you have the greatest search engine, what will it search? It will search and say no results because there's no content. Right now, if I had used the ISA work, okay, there is something called human dynamics there. Okay, so there is something called uh, business technology and strategy, which is two columns. And in the two columns, I would have had a check. Is it easy for the end user to use it? How important is it? So when the senior stakeholder said, all these are important, we need it. I just said, okay, make all fields mandatory. That's it. Required. Nobody entered. Why will I enter 10 mandatory fields to upload a document after the project is over? There's no incentive for the end user to upload a document. Project is over. Okay. So it is like, um, um, so I, I'm just thinking in a normal household, right? Uh, if there is uncooked, unwashed dishes, there is a motivation to clean it so that you will cook. Okay. So we, if we call children in the house and then say, you want food, wash the dishes, you will get food. If the mom says they will clean the dish, but after having food, you ask them to clean the dish. They won't. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so the what is the motivation for somebody to upload the document that was clearly missing. There was nothing designed, there was nothing in the solution for somebody to, why should they be uploading it? Now, not only we missed that point, which was the business technology and strategy. As a end user, why should I upload document? I didn't ask that question. Mm -hmm. So the first pillar would have helped me ask that question. Now I am wise. At that time, I was stupid. I was an excellent technologist, great developer, but completely messed up solutioner. Okay. Okay. And second, when, when I made those 10 fields mandatory, I missed the human dynamics part of it. You can call it user experience, UI, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But it's about the human dynamics. Humans don't like to input a lot of things. It's very yeah. boring. So right. if I had used the architecture tool, I would have done a much better job. And specifically, these columns in the ISA pillars would have helped me take a better decision and in designing the solution better. Gautam, uh, you have any any insights on how it has helped you or 
uh, how it would have helped you in in some scenarios see i i believe that uh, this architecture in terms of uh, like okay like the example which kumaran just told uh, like uh, the jd edwards or the sap scenario right uh, so when you see from application standpoint in our uh, uh, landscape basically what happens is uh, people always look at the external world because they say that okay there are a lot of applications which are out there in the market which gives a very very effective solution right but they don't think it uh, in a way that how that is going to integrate with my current landscape right they don't look at that at all so they always see that okay i have a, uh, another application which works beautifully in a standalone environment because Uh, the person who has developed it also gives a very rosy picture of it saying that hey i can do this i can do that i can make wonders of it. but they don't look at it in a way that when it comes into my environment i am already running a few applications with me and how is that going to come and cope up with me right so that's where uh, people don't understand and uh, we have to make them understand hey see you are actually going to toggle between multiple applications and at one point of time it's eventually going to fail and we have seen a lot and even in my current scenario we are facing one uh, with the dilemma on whether to go forward or move backward or just uh, right off right so we are in that situation because they just gave a rosy picture that okay my entire problem will be solved that's what they literally told us mm-hmm. and when we <laughs> came into when that application came into our landscape that's when people realize there are heck of a problem in it mm-hmm. right so the people have to think it from the human dynamics perspective just like what kumaran told because you will also have to see how that is going to solve your problem in a seamless way mm-hmm. just like how apple operates right the mm-hmm. apple ecosystem how seamless it is mm-hmm. because even though you toggle between application it's very uh, fluid in nature whereas i don't want to give a experience which is very rugged mm-hmm. right Okay. so i think uh, for example whatever you are talking right so there is a pillar called it environment so in this case two pillars it environment and human dynamics both together right if you go through those checklists it will help us think better mm. so for example like like for example i think the thing is right like uh, in it environment there is something called uh, technical uh, project management okay now the technical project management if you look at it right i think it is basically uh, how do you assess dependencies between different applications and things like that so you have to get the apis ready or the data out from there now usually if you look at all these interactions are an afterthought in all these projects correct Okay, yes. towards the end right you will say oh you that master did now you scramble to get it from that other <laughs> application that developer is not there that vendor is not there now you try to die a batch file and you can't really get that exact data then from a mail going out you try to get it that is only half all these things happen now that is technical project management right so that again if you look at it it's an it environment pillar which kind of uh, So, so Kumar, let me ask you this: How would you, if 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 a organization were to look at uh, a, as a guiding framework, let's say let's say they decide to adopt uh, ISA as a framework for for their uh, uh, IT projects, uh, mm-hmm. or even at, at the larger scale, they want to adopt IT uh, at the the ISA as a framework for their enterprise IT itself. yeah how 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 would they go about actually implementing it or even start thinking about it what do they need to do i think first uh, they just they can act, see i think the good thing about i says there's nothing hidden about it okay mm-hmm. so uh, they should first go to the uh, isa global site okay? okay and start having a look at uh, the different um, areas under them do you want okay. to mention the url right now yeah, yeah so it is it's isaglobal.com i a s a global.com okay 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 and uh, they can look for it a boc 3.0 so this is similar to pm boc which is easy to remember mm-hmm. project management book of knowledge it architecture book of knowledge so they go there they'll be able to find uh, different version so if you can read it okay of course mm-hmm. you can read it 
So it's it's um, it's, it's open source in that sense, respect in that sense. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. Everything is open source. Okay. So there's uh, there's a ton of uh, information and it's all guidance. It's not it's not that it's restricted. Anybody can get a use or a hang of it. Everything is available open source. Okay. Um, now, how well are we able to do it? There are multiple levels through which we will know our capability. <clears throat> so there is like, you know, I know what it is. Okay. Um, I've heard of it. I, I kind of get a sense of what architecture is. I really understand what architecture is. Okay. I have used some principles of architecture in my previous projects. Okay. I am a master who can teach and drive architecture principles across the organization. So these are different competency levels. So from an ISA perspective, there are certifications at each of these levels. And beyond the first two, right? The first two is a purely I know kind of a thing, which is an online. But three and four are boards, which means you have to demonstrate that you have experience of architecture. So that's where it kind of differs from others. So you have to demonstrate. So you're demonstrating, I have already applied knowledge. I've already applied the principles of I of architecture in my solutions. Mm -hmm. So level three and level four, which is a CETA P and a CETA D is based on that. Okay. So that is one way, like, let's say I am the CTO or the CEO of our organization. How will I know that somebody is actually doing architecture? Okay. Um, so I think in this way, ISA gives a very good thing because they go through the board of having applied it. Okay. So at a bare minimum, you don't want to spend money or time. Go to the site down, look at the artifacts. Okay. And start. So probably as a CTO, let's say you don't want to spend money. Go to that architect site. Look at it. Spend some half an hour. You know what. Based on that, start asking questions to your architects and other teams. That's how a senior exec could do it. Practitioners actually go there. When you do a design a solution, look at it, click that site and then see how much of it is getting mapped? So this is, a, I think, is a quick start. So are there some tools available uh, within the site which you recommend uh, for for people to get started? See, if they when they start going through that itself, the links to the tool exist right there. Okay. There it's okay. So when they when you start reading a particular capability, mm -hmm. you will find a link to a download. You click on that, it will take you to the download, and then you use. It. So that's how it. So most, yes, most of the tools tool are basically questionnaires which people should apply those. Uh, uh, yeah, they are questionnaires or they are like templates which you can fill, right? Map boxes that you can fill up. So it mm -hmm. helps you think, right? It asks questions. Yeah, they are kind of questionnaires only. Correct. Okay. okay. So, so they are questionnaires like, uh, which people For example, can I think when I tell business uh, value canvas, right? Mm -hmm. Um it's a standard thing which they use in business architect. So there are canvases like that. Okay. So a so, business canvas has like, who is the vendor? Who is the mm -hmm. channel partner? Uh, what are the uh, assets? What are the liabilities of this business? Mm -hmm. What is the key functional area? What would be their success? So you fill them. So in one map, you get all these things. So like that, there are a lot of different canvases for each and every scenario. Right. So I, I think that this is, a, this is a good recommendation for people looking at uh, implementing architectural framework and ISA is uh, as good as any. And uh, and if you believe uh, Kumaran, it is the more, most easiest to implement. And uh, so just, just from uh, the wider implementation perspective, does ISA actually cover... Uh, what what we traditionally call as enterprise architecture or yeah yeah it does yes it does okay. it definitely co covers that it's a part of that so it's all baked into that so you can either see that's the beauty of i would say isa it's like a fractal mm -hmm. you can apply it for a three member team mm -hmm. you can do it for a three billion dollar company mm -hmm. so it uh, it addresses it scales the it scales spectrum. it scales yeah okay so so is there is there something uh, which you uh, want to talk about the some of the other frameworks or you would say you uh, something which you I, found uh, difficult about those frameworks I, I think okay so i 
I don't think it's fair, uh, Deepak, because I would be more bashing. It's, it's, it's okay. Other, See, we have anyway, conflict because, of interest really doesn't matter here. But it's, uh, it's, no, it's not about conflict <laughs> of interest. It's yeah. basically that uh, both Zat when I have gone through it, I have read it. I have not mm-hmm. been able to apply it. So, so I, what, have, what I did, don't have. Any, so what I want to is what I want to understand is what was the difficulty you found, right? So. Oh, because right. at a, at a small project level it didn't have elements or tool to address like let's say i was doing a maintenance project people were fixing bugs mm-hmm. okay the elements in toga for uh, the tools artifacts i couldn't apply it at that level so they were too it was too wide heavy in scope. to be applied too at wide that in level. scope also yeah the 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 thought, the thought process that the documents artifacts which need to be filled up they were like too high level where I had to spend a lot of effort to ask. So if I had to ask somebody working in level three support, mm-hmm. I couldn't ask questions which were listed out in the Zachman framework to them. Mm-hmm. So I had to do a lot of modification or think through it. I had to modify the questions itself to ask that. So I couldn't use the tool directly as is. Mm-hmm. So the questions were more for uh, suited for let's say a GM or a VP kind of a company, not for a frontline worker. Okay. So, so, so last question from me is around this, uh, uh, this, the, the approach, which now most enterprises are now debating and they keep debating all the time is one is the product centric approach and other is the uh, project centric approach, right? So how does, how does ISA play in this or does it discriminate or it doesn't discriminate? How how do you see that approaches? See, I think it is uh, ISA basically approaches it from what value the solution is going to provide to the employee. So which can be definitely applied to a product. Correct. Yeah. So it's right. So so what you're saying is it does not interfere with that approach, right? No, it doesn't. See, it doesn't. as long as you are choosing to solve a problem, right? Mm-hmm. So it's um, a product approach means, is it something like which you want to replicate? Mm-hmm. If I don't want to replicate that capability or that solution, then it is a project approach. If I need replicability, like let's say, um, for example, right? I think we don't think of it that way. Uh, I think to some extent, but not completely. Like, let's say, let's take uh, Gautam's case here. They're implementing a solution for uh, proactive uh, prediction of uh, replenishment of inventory. Mm-hmm. Now that can be applied across different channels, mm-hmm. right? It can be across a different product. So you would have uh, low price tops, um, high premium variety shops within the same chain, right? And geographies, multiple geographies like that. So when somebody is implementing it for one, right somewhere in the horizon that you know i need to do this across all product lines and all thing is there but nobody is actually thinking about it mm-hmm. that thing gets implemented like a project only and then practically what happens is when somebody else tells you go use that they'll say no 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 that won't fit that will run only in uh, india south india for uh, uh, red color and idli vada only it will work it won't work for paratha or puri in north india okay okay so we have to develop a newer version for it right mm-hmm. so uh, why did that happen because there is lack of architectural thinking there mm-hmm. okay and then there's human dynamics also right so for example i think now all said and done there's human dynamics is that yeah, every IT guy wants to be important. So what is the big deal if uh, if Gautam has developed a solution, I take it and put it. Then, like, let's say we are two group CIOs. I am sitting in uh, India, Gautam is in Malaysia. I take his solution and put it. I don't get any stars, no? Gautam will get one more star. <laughs> so I have to figure out a way to implement another solution by myself, right? Then only I am a group CIO, India, I can put a star against me. I can say for India, I was able to do it. No, I, I think that 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 that's where the culture of the organization comes in because ah, you know, so yeah. the point I'm trying to say is when Gautam is doing a product approach, he should also make sure that there's something in the product which makes me India Group CEO also a winner by mm-hmm. adopting the product. Mm-hmm. 
Gautam didn't care about it. Mm-hmm. He is a selfish uh, <laughs> Malaysia GAO. He wanted stars for himself. He didn't care about my recognition or growth. Uh-huh. Yeah. So if he had done that, right, mm-hmm. then I would have taken his product. Hmm. which got missed in his thing that's why i don't want to adopt it yeah. right so i, I don't I, know I think, what that is okay yeah so but, i i think this this is this is a interesting topic we may may discuss uh, once again around product centric and project centric and we get more more uh, opinions around it because I, I believe we have not explored it today enough uh, to to do justice so i i think we'll conclude here uh, on on this topic on uh, architectural frameworks and uh, uh, recommendations which uh, kumaran has given and this is a, a relatively short uh, a podcast we produce uh, but uh, the important uh, summary which i want to make here is you must have a framework for your it enterprise teams to have guidance on making those choices and uh, it's not difficult for you to find uh, the information we'll also publish the url along with the podcast and you already heard kumaran talk about isa global so there is there are a lot of tools available apply them learn from it and uh, if it is important for you get certified uh, and as an architect if you want to really progress uh, certification really can help you and, and good thing which i heard about uh, isa is that uh, it is uh, practice based it is not just uh, passing an exam based so and and you have to prove your credentials to a board rather than uh, just write an exam which which i believe uh, uh, may not be as as uh, as as outcome oriented as it would be for somebody appearing for an interview for a board so again pros and cons you decide uh, which framework works for you we have given you Uh, a perspective on isa and uh, in general of why frameworks are important uh, we'll be happy to listen to your feedback please do subscribe to our channel on youtube and uh, if you don't know where to go and subscribe we are on google uh, podcast also now um, and if you don't know where to find it uh, you go to eti unplugged.in slash subscribe you will get all the ways to subscribe uh, please Uh, give your comments on linkedin or facebook we'd be happy to hear you thank you and see you next time